Now for a closer look at the legacy of World War II, especially the lingering influence in Asia, we are joined by Helen Zia, author of Asian American Dreams, The Emergence of an American People. Welcome to the broadcast. Hi, Susan. Thank you. Japan's war history seems so contrary to the nation we see today. How do you explain its actions to their Asian neighbors during World War II? Well, prior to World War II, Japan really had become the most modern, the most technologically advanced country within Asia. Their ascent was really remarkable. And they could have taken that in a peaceful way, but instead they they became arrogant. They decided that they were superior to all people in Asia and therefore worthy of, of total dominance of all other Asian people who they did not regard as people. And so in the course of history, uh, their actions throughout, throughout um, practically every country in Asia was to look at the human beings that they um, destroyed and mutilated and uh, uh, pretty much ran over. They called them pigs. They did terrible things. And um, as an example, when they invaded China, they thought it would take them only three months to subjugate all of China. Of course, after eight years, they surrendered. But that arrogance is what was the difference between becoming a great nation and um, uh, possibly bringing the entire region into modernity. Instead, they attempted to subjugate it, and that came out of a, a sense of arrogance and superiority and the feeling that they should be ruling the world. And that was a um, terrible legacy that they, uh, well, frankly, that they still have not really acknowledged. Right. So, Helen, you know it's been so long, so much time has passed. Why won't Japan acknowledge really on the table its actions, like the atrocities out in Nanjing. Why is there such a disconnect between the actions and the historical narrative? Well, that's a good question. And, and um, really, Japan needs to answer that. Their prime minister needs to answer that. And why, you know, Prime Minister Abe is the one who was even in the past uh, said that the atrocities against the comfort women never really happened or were exaggerated. And some of it really goes to the character of the leadership of Japan. And unfortunately, their unwillingness to um, truly not only apology, apologize, because an apology is words, but I think what they need to do is ask for forgiveness and also look into themselves and see what it was in their character. And, you know, there's a differentiation between the leadership of Japan and the leadership of Japan in the pre-war uh, years and during the war and the, the uh, emperor and the, the military that led Japan and the Japanese people into war. But as long as this is not really um, examined and a differentiation, a look at, like, what, what was it that led Japan to do this, and what can they do to be sure that it doesn't happen again? As long as that is not done, there is always the question of whether there is something in the Japanese character. And then that affects all of Japan and all Japanese people um, in the country, you know, the character of the country, which is really um, something that is going to haunt Japan until that is done.